Hey, I'm back. Alright, uh, this is video number two for today, I guess. There we go. Now, I was hoping to do this when I got some voltage regulators in, so I'll probably do this again. And then I'll just delete this video and re-upload it, but... I wanted to at least give you guys something. Um, something right now. So, many of us are running DC sites or remote sites. We're running solar sites or we want to use straight DC to get batteries, you know, just, you know what I mean. You, you have a DC PSU keeping your batteries topped up and then you've got your switch connected to your batteries and uh, your router's connected to your batteries and all that crap and then what you end up with is uh, a plant that just doesn't go offline until your batteries are dead. It's great for redundancy. Um, what I'm going to show you here is we've got an AC switch. This is just a cheap generic one I had kicking around the lab. So I'm going to use this as our demo. Now, a lot of you guys are good with technology to the point where you can make it work, but you aren't comfortable enough with it to tear it to pieces and make it bend to your will. Now remember, we are bigger than pixies, so we can bend them to our will fairly simply, but when they gang up in you and come at you as a full four scale, you're probably going to fucking die. So, anyway, that being said, this is a TP-Link gigabit switch. It's a 24 gigabit easy smart switch. It, this is not a smart switch. There's no management capability to it. I don't know why they call it a smart switch. Um, so, what we're going to see in here right now is um, exactly what I wanted to show you. This is a power supply, and it's a very, very tiny one. Um, it probably says what the voltage is on the board. Let's see here. So, it says... Uh, 12 volts DC, 1.5 amps. That's all that's running this board. If it's a PoE switch, it's probably going to be a 24 or 48, usually 48 volt, um, 10 amp, 5 amp, usually. So, that being said, I'm still going to show you a couple of things. So, I'm going to plug this thing into the wall. And... Where is my Dremel? Unplug the Dremel. Before I do... I am simply going to get my multimeter out. Because you know what? Don't trust anything. When it comes to um, certain things in electronics, you have to be careful because sometimes manufacturers booby trap things. I am not kidding about that. But if you're using Microtech or Cisco or Juniper, they don't booby trap anything. Um, most of the big guys have DC equipment anyway. So you always want to verify. Let me just... Where's my focus? I gotta focus again because this thing is driving me nuts. I really suck with this software. There we go. Okay. So, I'm gonna plug this in and we should see it jump to 12 volts if it's honest. No, I'm almost 11.9. It's a little low. Um, but it is booting. And let's give it some data to crunch. Yeah, that'll get her jump started. Uh, 12 on the dot now. All right, so this thing's tied into my network now, so it's pulling a little bit of data. Eh. Come on, lights work with me here. There. Okay, so, that being said, we now know red is definitely positive on this bad boy. And black is definitely negative. All right, well, why is that important? Well, because with most equipment... It has a single voltage input. Some equipment, you may actually find a dual output power supply, but they want to keep this as cheap and cost effective as you know possible. So they're not going to usually use dual channel uh, power supplies on these. So, why am I telling you all this? Well, simple. That's where the power goes in, folks. So now, let's say that you just went out and... Uh, set up a site but you need a DC switch and you can't find one and your only options would be like Natonics or something well you're not limited there you can take any PoE switch or any switch of your liking crack it open and all you really need to do is just take out this board am I getting a shock? okay so this board here takes AC 120 volts in right here actually I think this is dual voltage anyway 100 to 240 you take this board out here and um, where's that prop from my last video? You just need one of these little guys. 
All right, so these are just um, DC to DC boost converters. As long as you get one that outputs the appropriate voltage at the uh, correct current, and by the way, you go bigger than you need with these guys, but um, remember, whatever the current rating is, is actually referring to the input, because if the input's lower than the output, then the input's gonna be what's got the higher current with the power being your constant. So anyway, you can just take one of these guys and toss it in here and simply solder these wires or even just find one of these connectors or solder onto these, whatever way you wanna make it work, just as long as you've got plus going to plus and minus going to minus, positive, positive, negative, negative. So you can now take one of these little buck, or sorry, boost converters, I keep getting mixed up. You got a boost converter here. Take the power board out, put it on a shelf somewhere, save it, never get rid of them because you might blow a power supply and a switch. You need one. You mount this guy in here and uh, add some banana connectors on the back. It's as simple as that. Um, all of which you can get on Amazon now. So like um, female banana connectors, God, they're cheap. Uh, I think I got like a 20 pack. That's uh, 10 red, 10 black uh, with... Um, yeah, actually, it was like next day shipping with Prime, and I only paid like um, seven bucks, I think, for them. Like uh, this power supply here. See, so here's your little banana connectors, right? So it allows you to unthread and put a wire around it, or a terminal type connector, or you can take something like uh, where the hell did they go? You can take something like this, a banana connector with a pass through. And you can plug it in. I'm giving you guys ideas here today, folks. I'll order the parts in, and then we will. Uh, I'll show you guys how to do a mod on one of these. But um, yeah, that's essentially all you need to do. You just drill it out, put some bananas on here, put in a fuse, and then uh, install your boost converter. And there you go. You can now convert your AC switch into a DC switch. Simple as that. And uh, I did make this video for a specific individual. Um, I'll let you guys figure out who it is. So, um, yeah, but you can all use that. So, I mean, like, th this might be useful to you. Um, again, I'm going to do a proper mod video where I'll order the parts in uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I'll actually modify one of these. I may actually do it with a Microtech PoE switch as well, just so you guys can see. And um, you can, you know, I don't know. But anyway. That's it for right now, and uh, thanks, folks. We'll catch you later. Bye. Mm. <laughs>